Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Um, firstly, thank you very much for the invitation to be moderated. Normally, I'm the other side, I'm, I'm the speaker, so I'll try not to answer the questions today. Um, but um, that's another thing that uh, I would like to say. I mean, feel free at any point uh, to ask your own questions. From the beginning, uh, we'll be very flexible. I mean, we are very near uh, from each other, so you can just ask the word and we can, you can ask your own questions. Then, uh, to introduce very quickly myself, my name is Mario Tarok, I'm from Jade. Jade is the European Confederation of Junior Enterprises, mainly a Junior Enterprises a company run and managed by students while they are in the university. So there are around 300 of these companies uh, in Europe and we represent them here um, in Brussels in European level. But, um, I mean, it's enough about myself and um, if you want in the end we can talk a little bit more, but now let's give um, the floor to the speakers. I would ask to each of you uh, in the beginning to introduce yourself, I mean one minute, a minute and a half, say who you are, who you represent um, and why you are here. And then uh, we will follow up with some questions from my side. Uh, I mean this debate is about difficulties and opportunities, so we thought that it could be a good idea to start first with the difficulties and then to finish with the opportunities, okay? Um, and then in the end we go uh, to, of course, the final, the final uh, question. So during all this debate, feel free once again uh, to ask the word and to ask uh, a question. I just ask you, when you ask the question, to direct specifically to one of the speakers or two speakers you want to ask, okay? So now, and we can start from the left to the right. And I would like uh, to ask to you, Simon, please, to introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Oops. I will try. <laughs> To be brief, um, I work in the European Commission. Uh, previously, it was the Department for Enterprise and Industry. Now we changed our name with the new commission, so we are the DG for Growth. And uh, in particular, I am responsible for the promotion of entrepreneurship. We have, for instance, at European level, a policy document called the Entrepreneurship 2020 Action Plan. Uh, so I deal a bit horizontally with uh, several initiatives to promote entrepreneurship. However, my uh, more specific field of competence is about education for entrepreneurship. So how about uh, encouraging like, young people like you to acquire and develop the skills and to think about starting a company. So let's say uh, in general activities to promote entrepreneurship but also as I will explain later we believe that the basis uh, of everything is to have an entrepreneurial culture in Europe and an, entre an entrepreneurial culture starts with education so we are working very much on that. Before I introduce myself, since this morning I've been looking at this chair and thinking that looks so comfortable uh, I really want to sit there and now that I'm here, um, I'm thinking, recalling the previous debate and uh, how at some points the speakers seemed a bit uncomfortable and I think this reflects a lot my, my experience. So I'm uh, Sise Gelo, I'm from ISEC and ISEC is about leadership development and we believe that uh, the fundamental solution to most of the uh, situations or difficulties that young people are facing is leadership. And this is what I represent and I believe that this chair somehow represents the difficulty that most people face. And what I mean by this is that we see an opportunity, it is in our reach, it's just a few steps away, but we just don't have the courage to take those few steps to push ourselves that extra mile and somehow put ourselves in the uncomfortable position where you have several people watching at you and waiting for you to fail. Thank you. Okay, I'm Andre. Uh, I, love, uh, I love events like that and a situation like this. I love the way I do team working for me is preparing over 10 pages of what I have to say and from 99% of the cases I'm probably saying 1% of what is written down and I'll keep it that way for that event as well. Uh, everybody was saying what they represent so roughly, roughly I'm representing 508 million uh, citizens around Europe 
a member of the European Union, and uh, recently uh, I'm the youngest member of the Parliament, which allows me to, to wear sneakers within the plenary. <laughs> I'm Bulgarian. Yeah, I'll go to that point, but I'll make myself commercial at the moment. Uh, and because I'm 27 since two days ago, um, Beside that, I'm a member of the Committee of Regional Development, Budget and Control of the Budget. I'm working very cro close on the on the cases uh, such as youth employment and uh, youth entrepreneurship, because that's near to my heart. So, uh, I'm really looking forward for, for our discussion. And just bear in mind something. Uh, I don't, it's not the exam, it's on the lecture. I mean, we were talking the way like we, we've met, let's say, outside McDonald's or somewhere else. Nothing has changed. Most of you are at my age. Obviously, the girls are younger than me, much younger than me. But still, keep it that way. I mean, we're literally talking like your friend outside in the streets. It's, it's up to you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, my name is Julie Foulon, I'm the managing director of Beta Group. So Beta Group is the largest tech community of Belgium with more than 8,000 members. So basically what we do, we organize events every month during which startups can present their activities, their products and services to the community. In exchange, they receive some feedback. They also meet some, uh, some investors, new contacts, and uh, they've got the possibility to network. So we do that in Belgium, and we start to do that uh, abroad, and the idea is to create an international um, startup community. Uh, hey, I'm French. Wow. I'm Parisian, exactly. So I'm French. So I'm also an entrepreneur, and I'm here to uh, give you some tips and tricks to, um, to help you um, to start a company if you, if you want to. Thank you very much for your introductions. I would just ask you, you, you could skip this microphone, you could use that one, so uh, we will be more efficient. Thank you. And now um, we could start for the first, uh, for the first part. Once again, anytime you want to ask questions, feel free to do it. Uh, so the first part is about difficulties. And the first question, uh, the questions will be open to uh, anyone that wants to answer, okay? Uh, I'll just once again ask to keep it brief so we can tackle different uh, questions. Um, so the competition between small and big companies is historical and uh, is also inevitable. Okay? And um, the two always coexisted and co consumers have benefited from this, yeah, from having bigger and smaller companies. And uh, did this crisis titled the balance in favor of the bigger companies or the small companies have still something to say uh, about, about it? You want, to, you want to answer to this question? Okay, For, um, it's, uh, we're in a, dur uh, during this crisis period, it's uh, very complicated to do innovation. So, um, what I would like to say about this, um, this question is that uh, small companies can have uh, uh, can really have a role to play because they can really answer the demand of the market um, in a more efficient way than big companies who already have um, a market and consumers and clients. Do you agree with that? Well, just to add to that, uh, firstly, I really hope that uh, SMEs are still important and competitive in Europe because they are 99% of our companies, so if we lose SMEs, we are in troubles. Uh, and also, uh, SMEs create 85% of the new jobs, uh, according to statistics, so we really need SMEs. And I tend to agree, I mean, uh, that uh, SMEs, they have a chance because in general they, are, they can be more entrepreneurial than bigger companies and they can be more flexible. So I think they have an important role to play and also they have new opportunities with the information technologies. So they have it easier now to, for instance, to, to be in contact with potential clients, 
But of course, they also need to, uh, to learn how to use these information technologies in order to change their business model. This is very important. It's not just about having your web page, it's about changing your business model with the use of these technologies. I'll keep it short. Although it's tough for me. But I, I'll give you a story, a short one. I know it very well because it's mine. I mean, I, I lived through it. So before I, I become a member of European Parliament, since I was my high school years, uh, I had to work like since I was 14 or something like that. And one of my first jobs was to selling watches. It was fake watches by far, light speed ugly, and most of them didn't work at all. But this is what I have to do to earn for tuition fees, books, and everything what I needed in the school and in the university. And here am I. I'm sure each of you somehow is selling fake watches somewhere, somehow, but don't give up. I mean, follow your dream. I know it sounds like a fairy tale, but is it? I mean, if you keep on, if you, if you don't give up, you don't give in, sooner or later it will happen. Just keep selling fake watches. <laughs> this kind watches, of, you know, that's showing the time. This coming from a member of the European Parliament selling <laughs> fake watches, it's very good advice. Thank you, thank you. Uh, just one small point to add, and also connected to a story, is that uh, from the previous debate, uh, Marty mentioned that there is no crisis. Actually, the crisis is in our heads. And my experience has been, in terms of working with big enterprises, after 2008, we saw that our collaboration dropped. So we offer internships or exchanges uh, through companies. And our collaboration with big companies dropped, but our collaboration with small and medium enterprises started to increase. So on one side, I believe it shows us that they are more agile and they respond to change faster. And as a result, I believe that they are still very important for our society. Uh, secondly, is that uh, in the past three, four years, uh, people, my own colleagues, have launched themselves into the, into the startup arena. And two of them have been successful, two of them not. But what happened was that they saw a need which the big companies were not addressing directly anymore. And they could plug that gap faster than anyone could. So as a result, I really do believe that they have a really big role to play in order to keep the society moving forward. I would like now to, to mention something that Simon mentioned, uh, to bring a question about it, about the online business. Um, do you think, um, I mean, what are the biggest advantages of conducting a business uh, in the online world? I mean, uh, online retail has emerged as a major business sector. Using it as a test, as a test case, um, what explains its success and how can we learn from it? Do you have any examples? Perhaps someone that you know that's conducted or started a business or is running a business online. I mean, what are the main advantages and the main barriers of it? Uh, what is great with online business is that there's no frontiers, there's no edges, it's really easy and it doesn't cost anything, which is great. Like uh, from your living room, you can start something, you can sell pro products or services, uh, yes, directly from your coach and you can reach basically everybody, which is great. Uh, even, if, um, even if you want to try um, uh, to launch something new, you can find easily some uh, platform, free platform, um, in, on which you can sell these products and services. And it, it can be a very good test market uh, before to, um, to develop a brand new uh, platform for your e-commerce. So there's no frontier, there's uh, no limits, uh, and it's open uh, all the time. Like you can do business uh, 24 hours, seven, day, uh, seven, uh, that? seven days per week. Is anyone of you guys aware with the book series called Lost My Name? Lost My Name? No one. Okay, they are not successful yet, but they are getting there. <laughs> 
So uh, essentially, this is a book which you can. Uh, it's it's a book for children, and you can customize it. Literally, you can customize every page. So if it's the birthday of your child, you can actually, uh, let's say, just give the name of your child, and then every page is going to have that name, practically. And you can actually uh, go online, and you can create what kind of book you want. For instance. Uh, this child is going to animals and asking them if they have seen their name and then uh, each animal represents a letter. For instance, if it's George, there's going to be a giraffe and then an elephant, etc. I'm, I'm mentioning this example because all of this is done online. So you just go to the website and you pretty much design the book, you order it and then it's shipped to your address. The person, the people or the team behind the book is just in different locations around the world. They don't even have an office. And essentially they just code different uh, scenarios and all of this is happening online. So what I mean to, to say by this is that a lot of businesses are emerging where the need for, uh, to have talent in one place, regrouped in one place, is not so much necessary. You can actually outsource to different parts of the world at any time and you can actually develop a successful business model. This for me is somehow showing the evolution of business because as a student right now who doesn't have a lot of means financially speaking, I'm not afraid to launch myself into the business world because I know I can fall back on the social, uh, the power of social networks, let's say. So uh, Google lost my name, they're a really cool, uh, a really cool initiative. Talking about online business, I'm, I'm thinking about failure. I mean, here in Europe, we, we've got very bad culture on failure. I mean, if you if you if you fail once, it's like uh, I don't know. Uh, you, you live with it. You, you can uh, get over it. I mean, I'll give you an example. In my own country, if you if you get bankrupt and your company just failed because you, you can't pay anymore, for the next five six, seven years probably, uh, you can't reopen a new one, you have to pay your debts and so on and so forth, which is bad. But what is going on in the States? I mean, you, you failed, on the next day you, you're free, you're able to open a brand new company to start again. And this is, it's, it's all about reasons, in, at least in my view. In, in, why I'm saying this while talking about online businesses? Because uh, there is no time out of market in online uh, businesses. I mean, you start now, like like tomorrow morning you can start if you like. But starting business, especially here in Europe, it's uh, it's a different story in each different member state. So what what we need is standard procedures, faster, cheaper in each member state. You don't have to queue in online to create your own company. It should be much easier and faster. So I'm sure when we, me, you, are growing in all things, in politics, science and business, we will change that. And things will happen much, much faster, mainly online. Yeah, just I do agree with Andre. Can I add something to that? Yeah. Um, probably you, some of you would like to uh, to start a company or to start a business and your parents are like, oh no, don't do that, please don't. Because if you fail, uh, you will be stuck, nobody, uh, if you want to launch another business, it's going to be very complicated and you won't have any uh, security. Uh, so uh, become a functionnaire or uh, become an employee, it will be much safer. And I do agree with that. And it's a a problem of culture uh, in Europe, we are very risk averse, we don't want to take any risk and uh, we do have to, we, we have to change that, we have to change this um, connotation of this, this stigma of failure which is not good, so we have to change the whole culture and for that we, we have to, uh, to show some uh, role modeling videos or interviews of some entrepreneurs who failed and we say, okay, I'll start three companies, but I failed, but look, I've learned from my mistakes, and I opened the fourth one, and it's, uh, and now it's, it's, everything is doing well. 
And for that, I would like to uh, talk to you about a very interesting um, program led by the European Commission called Whatify, on which you've got uh, role modeling videos from a lot of entrepreneurs who are talking about their failures. That's very, very interesting. So you just um, type on Google Whatify, W A T I F Y. And you'll see all these entrepreneurs who want to share with you their doubts and all their, all their, all their mistakes. Because when you become an entrepreneur... And it's working. One third of the MPs in the Ukrainian parliament are under 25. And this is not a coincidence. There is a lot of young people showing up in politics, business, and science. So you have to be used to it. I mean, there is a lot of young, not just in Bulgaria. I mean, yes, we have very young people, colleagues of mine, very good persons, under 30, but there is a lot of young people from uh, Germany, from the Greens, let's say. Uh, although I'm not a, a fan of the Greens, but still there are very young people there, socialists as well. So here we can see most of them are the, the, the future Bill Gates here, or probably Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, this is how it is. I mean, uh, now in 21st century, the things are happening faster. I'm not sure it's better or it's worse, but it's faster. I mean, we're growing faster, we succeed faster, we fail faster, everything is faster. So, if 10 years ago you have to be at least 50 to become an MEP, now I'm, 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 I was 26 when I, when I became an MEP. Probably in 10 years you will be 18. So, it's not strange. Julie, uh, I'd like to ask you about uh, if too many ideas and too many startups, if you think are, if it's a problem, I mean, because you connect people, you make them happen. So, what is your point of view on this topic? I think it's not an issue if you see a lot of uh, startups, uh, uh, if, you, if you've got more and more startups in the market, I think it's great. Um, I think it's great to have more and more projects. Unfortunately, uh, as André said, one of ten uh, becomes successful. That's so true. But it, but it's good. It's good to, to start something uh, with the un the unemployment rate. Uh, now, uh, young people they they create their own job, and it's what they do by creating by launching startups and launching their, their ideas. I think it's not a problem at all. I think it's great. It's a good sign. Do, do you agree, Simon? Yeah, I do agree. I think that uh, starting your company, managing your company and be successful is already difficult enough. We shouldn't make it more difficult with burdensome procedures. So I think everything that is about procedures, public administration, the things that you have to do, pay taxes, everything should be very easy. There will be other difficulties that the entrepreneur has to, to face. So I think uh, I'm not afraid of uh, the possibility of starting your business online in one hour. I mean, that's great. I don't see any problem with that. Uh, and unfortunately, I mean, we still make it a bit too difficult in Europe because uh, for starting a company now, uh, the situation is not so bad. Uh, for instance, we, uh, we are counting how many days does it take to register your company in the different countries. And when we started this uh, type of uh, statistics in 2008, in Europe it took 12 days on average to start your company, just to, to do the registration of your company, 12 days. Now it takes on average uh, 3 days and a half. So there is already some progress at least that it's not so difficult to, to start, to, to, to create your company at least on paper. You, you can do it rather quickly. But still there are a lot of licenses that you need to get, there are a lot of permissions so not only you start your company, your company is there, but then if you want to be operational, you need permissions, you need authorizations for the environment, for health, uh, security and a lot of things. So this is still difficult and in fact we have a target at European level that it shouldn't take more than one month for a company to get all the licenses that the company needs. So this is the target. and. Uh, at the moment, the situation is not so bad because we have a new study published where it seems that on average it takes 46 days to get licenses for a company. However, the situation is very different in different countries and in some countries it takes much longer. 
to get the necessary licenses. So just to make a long story short, I think that this type of things we need to make them very easy. Also because it will show young people especially that to be an entrepreneur is not something extremely difficult. So I think it's also a matter of image, of having a positive image of entrepreneurship. We should say, we should communicate that it's easy to start. Everybody can do it. Of course, to be successful is, is a bit more difficult. But uh, I think we should make it clear that entrepreneurship is something Um, make them in success and fail stories because from our network we have a lot of young people that created their own companies and of course all of them or a lot of them I mean uh, they fail a lot so even if they, if they are successful they failed in some parts of it so they can uh, teach you how to, to create your own company and I would ask from your side I mean I, I'm sure when it comes to fear or failure uh, you have some points to, to say uh, what is your opinion do you think we should encourage young people to create, to go just and start something tomorrow, an online business, even if it's something smaller? Or no, do you think they should go and learn, I don't know, to go to a big consultants and then after some years of experience they should start? What is your opinion? Do you agree? I have a cousin who has started until now three different companies or tried to start because all of them have failed. And I have a friend who is pretty much in the same situation. What I really respect about them is that when they have an idea, they have the guts to actually do something with it. I have a lot of ideas, but I never put any of it into practice, which is the other extreme. I really do believe that we need to launch ourselves into, into doing something, or trying to make something happen. But one problem that I see, especially with a lot of young people, and I'm in this group definitely, is that we launch ourselves blindly. There is still a need to uh, have research before you launch yourself into an idea. Of course, you believe it will plug a gap in the market, but do you know exactly how it, uh, what your target is, what the consumers you're targeting really feel about the product you want to bring in? And this is something that a lot of people miss from the beginning. Uh, secondly, is the fact that we uh, don't think beyond the idea. So what is the next step after you, you for instance, publish your website? How are you going to uh, adapt your business model to changing needs of the market? And this is something we don't think uh, deeply into. And I used to hate statistics at university, but now more than ever I understand the value that it can bring me in terms of analyzing demographically speaking how my ideas can actually have a real tangible impact on society. So I do believe we need to launch ourselves, but we need to launch ourselves with the right uh, tools. Yeah, I can only agree with that. I would like to say that uh, failure is a very important point. When we ask Europeans which are the main obstacles to start a company, because we have surveys regularly, you know, about the Eurobarometer probably, so when we ask Europeans what about starting a company, it emerges that uh, the, the most important obstacles are the lack of skills, because uh, people think they don't have the skills to start a company, it's too difficult. And another one is fear of failure. So people would not start a company because they are afraid of failure. And why they are so much afraid of failure? Because, as it was said before, in Europe we have very heavy procedures and a very heavy stigma against those who fail, which is not the case, uh, we have to repeat it many times, unfortunately, which is not the case in the United States, for instance. So we, we need, first of all, a change in culture, because it should be seen that failing is part of the risk of enterprise. You take risk, and of course you might fail. It's a learning experience, and normally when you fail once, you will have better skills when you start a second time, you will have learned from the experience. And so we should change that, and so we should see uh, failing as, as a necessary risk and as an experience. But on the other hand, so we need to start from culture, from education, but also we need to change our procedures. Because of course, if, uh, if uh, failing becomes a sentence like uh, uh, a punishment for life, then of course people will be very afraid to, to start a company. So in, at European level, of course, we are working on these aspects, not only on the education and cultural aspect, but we are also working to make these uh, procedures for bankruptcy quicker and simpler. 
And uh, for instance, I don't want to go too much into technical details, details now, but for instance, we have a target that it shouldn't take more than three years at maximum for an entrepreneur who has failed to clear all his or her debts so that they can start again. But that's really like the maximum limit that we, that we would like to see. And also what is important is that uh, when, once you have failed and then your situation is cleared, you have again access to credits, access to funding. Because that is not the case very often. An entrepreneur who has failed has a negative score and so he or she is not able to get new funding for, uh, for, uh, for the new business. So there are a lot of things that we need to do. We are improving, but... Uh, uh, and of course the problem here is that every member state has own legislation and regulations. So it's not so easy to address the issue at European level. We are doing that, but it takes time. That's also why, I'm sorry to interrupt, so that's also why uh, Beta Group has been created because at the beginning of Beta Group it was just a bunch of entrepreneurs who were seeing each other to exchange their experiences and their skills and the idea was to help each other. So if you got an issue, if you're looking for a developer or uh, uh, e-marketer for instance, I can, uh, I can uh, recommend one to you for instance and then it went bigger and bigger because there was a need, there was a need of uh, of exchange information in order to help each other. In the beta group community, you've got 25% of people, uh, I call them the wannabes, the people who would like to become an entrepreneur, but they are too afraid to become an entrepreneur. And they come to the beta group meetings, why? They just because they need to see uh, some, suce some success, they need to see other people who, uh, who, uh, who became an entrepreneur, who launched their ideas, and they want to know how they, how they did that. And in this kind of meeting, that's why if you want to launch a project, don't stay alone, um, link yourself to a network and speak to other people. That's very important. Don't stay alone. Never, never stay alone. Speak to other people. Don't keep your ideas for yourself. And then also go to, um, you've got a lot of uh, very interesting um, programs like Startup Weekend where you can uh, test your ideas and then you've got MIC, uh, MIC, the MIC programs, Microsoft Innovation uh, programs uh, in Brussels, Ghent or um, in Mons for instance where you can um, uh, work on your business model and uh, launch a prototype. You can also go into incubators and then come back to Beta Group to talk about your ideas and then uh, go to acceleration programs. So if you want to become an entrepreneur, don't stay alone and, um, and uh, link yourself to some programs or to other entrepreneurs. Sure. Just, no, just talking about that, a quick question. As we love statistics, can I ask how many of you are thinking of starting a business or maybe you have already starting, started a business? Can you raise your hand? if you want to be an entrepreneur. That's a lot. 85%. Look, <laughs> hey. Okay, you can go. Sure. A few months ago, I was on uh, proven the smartest square kilometer on Earth. You know, it's not that far. It's uh, in Eindhoven, in the Netherlands. Uh, when I came back, I didn't feel smarter, but still a lot of ideas come to my mind. Uh, how they did it? They gathered literally a bunch of people, like randomly, with ideas and spirit for entrepreneurs. And when I asked them, how, what is the secret, how you did it? A coffee machine. Really, a coffee machine. Yeah, you're surprised for the second time this, this is on the stage, I'll, I'll keep on that way. And I was asking, why, why the coffee machine? Why is that? You know, they made only one coffee machine in the whole co-working place. There are probably 100 of them. So they have to queue for the coffee and they, they talk to each other. They just talk to each other on the queue. They give you an example. There was five people in the startup company developing their fast charging batteries. Right next to them, was the guys, were very talented, drawers, uh, designers, who design cars. So they talk to each other, what are you doing? We're doing cars, okay? We're we drawing, we're designing cars. So what are you doing? We're doing fast charging batteries. So why we don't do a car with fast charging batteries? Three years later, they were sold to Renault, 
the, the, the French manufacturer, car manufacturer, a few millions, just like that, for a coffee machine. Just like Julie said, talk to each other, don't stay alone. Everything is like that, you know, just talk to each other. And also, uh, because no, but there's there's a there's a mistake that all the students do. You know, they're like, oh, please, can you send the DNA? You know, it stops secret ID, blah blah blah. No, stop. Do don't do that. You know, you have to talk about your IDs, and you will you will go even faster to launch your your product or services if you share your IDs with other people. And don't think that someone will steal your ID because it's not true. Actually, don't care. Yeah, true. I mean, um, a lot. We were talking before five minutes ago about what happens after you fail. Now we are talking about how to prevent that. And one of the tips is surround yourself about, I mean, experienced people and people that already failed. And I'd like to bring here a topic about um, the the role models that also were mentioned already here. I mean, if you look into some of the of magazines on the United States or even in Europe, you'll see that. You, you recognize uh, some faces like the uh, founder of Facebook or uh, other names like this, but then uh, who knows the founder of Roview or uh, Spotify? I mean, these are uh, European startups and very well success. And another point that I particularly me, uh, I like and I'd like to bring here, it's about mentoring. And uh, there's a very cool video uh, I would advise you to see. It's like a TEDx, 10, 20, uh, 12 minutes. Uh, it's called 33% Law. And it's very clear cool. like it's about mentoring and how you can divide your time in three parts. That's why it's 33%. But I'd like to hear from you what you think about the role models, the importance and um, the mentoring. Also to have a mentor uh, with 20, 34 years more than you uh, to give you more experience. Yeah. Do you want to say something? Well, why not? The ladies first. Guys, you know, me? Good. I mean, Although, uh, we, 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 okay, we can say there is a role model or no matter what name we give to that model, everybody, each of us, has somebody to learn from. No matter you're doing business, you're doing politics, um, nobody of us was born with, with the knowledge we need. So, uh, the fastest and the, and the best way to, to get it is from practice. How you get it from the practice? When you learn from somebody else. I love that uh, that saying. It's very old one. That uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not politically correct, but let's say that not that smart people all learn from their own mistakes. Smart people learn from the mistakes of others. So if you'd like to skip uh, some possible problems you can have, just stall the, the experience of somebody else. And I think the role model, it's, it's very important. And don't be afraid to start not just from the zero, but from minus 10. I mean, our parents will never be shy to work in McDonald's baking sandwiches. Actually, they will call that a great possibility. So it's not shame, but it's start. You have to start from somewhere. I'm not saying you have to do it from McDonald's. But no matter you start, just no, keep it's not universal model. I mean, it could be a very bad company. And the leader of the company probably is not such a nice person that you can learn from it, but from him. But once you get in the right place and the leadership and the, the supervisor in front of you can inspire you, then you're free to, to learn. Otherwise, uh, we, we live in 2015. If you don't have, if you don't work somewhere, you don't have somebody expiring you in the front of you, you can always look in, in, in TEDx. Me personally, you know, I was inspired by a 12 year old boy. He was 12 year old. He has a, like 12 minute in the TEDx. He has autism and still is one of the best mathematicians in the world. So I was inspired by him. I mean, the speech he gave and everything. He started his speech with, please for, forget everything what you learn, everything what you know for the next 10 minutes. He's 12. So, just, yeah, think out of the box. Don't fit in the standards. Change standards. Uh, 
I've had one very powerful mentor during my experience. In fact, he is still very much connected to everything that I do. Uh, his name, I, I call him Mr. Miller. He used to be my teacher in high school. And somehow we had a sort of connection. He was my history and Latin teacher. This guy is anti everything related to capitalism, economics, democracy. He's very anti everything, let's put it this way. And not really. <laughs> uh, but one thing that he has always done uh, really, really well is keep me out of my bubble. Because every time I launch myself into something I'm passionate about, I become blind to what is happening around me. And every time I meet this guy for a coffee, for a lunch, he's always there to, let's say, remind me of everything that is happening in society and how sometimes what I believe to be the perfect idea is not necessarily taking into account all the factors that I need to be considering. Essentially, he is the person who watches how I develop as an individual but is not connected with my current reality. And having him around me, beside me, has been a great support and it has helped me a lot to change and to grow as an individual. Uh, one of the fundamental values we believe in Isaac in, in developing leadership is that we need to be self-aware. And sometimes this self-awareness gets lost and he helps me to come back to this. So I truly believe in the value and the power of mentors and I believe that everyone should have a mentor because they are an invaluable resource in terms of knowledge and, um, and keeping you, let's say, out of your bubble and out of what you're doing in your everyday life. Yeah, I would like to come back to what Mario said in the beginning. I mean, I can only agree. For me, the big problem, I mean, an example of the problem is that in Europe, we don't know our entrepreneurs. I mean, that's really a sign that there is something wrong. We don't know our successful entrepreneurs. And uh, so at European level, we are doing something. We are doing some promotional activities to make our entrepreneurs better known. However, uh, a much bigger effort is needed. I mean, I think we need a basic change in culture and then we also need some big media campaigns probably because we need to make these great people known to, to everybody. And uh, as regards uh, mentors, I would like just to mention very briefly, maybe uh, to do some publicity, to a program of the European Commission, which is Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs. I don't know to which extent you are aware of this program. Uh, program. Uh, this is a great program because it gives a young entrepreneur, but even somebody who is not yet an entrepreneur, he has or she has a business plan and the intention to, to, go, uh, to go ahead about it, so this young entrepreneur can be coached by an experienced entrepreneur in another country. So you can spend a period of time abroad, and this is why it's called Erasmus, like in the Erasmus for university students, you can spend a period of time abroad in another country with an experienced entrepreneur and work together on your business idea. So I think this is a great program because it gives young entrepreneurs the possibility to be coached on their business, on their business idea by uh, somebody who has the experience and everybody can participate so I would like to to really raise your awareness uh, on this uh, on this possibility <laughs>